Good evening, everyone. The Ranter is back to go through yet another rambling diatribe of the news of the day. I wasn't really going to do this, um, but the events of the last few days, the last few weeks, has simmered and simmered and simmered until it finally boiled over, figuratively and literally, given our current events and what is going on in our country. So, what I'm going to try to do is where I'm going to talk about this stuff in the level of importance. Because some things are more important than others. Some things are right in our current events, a reflection of the injustices and inhumanities that this country has dealt with since its founding, since its discovery, since its settlement, since its colony days. And then we're going to deal with the current events of us going through a pandemic and the milestone we just we, we just passed with that and uh, the certain actions and inactions of people in positions of political power and how they handled it and how they didn't handle it in front of their own colleagues. From those levels of importance, we're gonna go all the way down to the end of the importance to the pathetic and petty bullshit that is our president. But we're not going to talk about him now because he is not important in this right now. What is important is what is happening now on the streets of Minneapolis and not the protests. No, what caused the protests? The, de the death of George Floyd at the hands of the police. Now, you know, when, some, when someone like me ventures a subject, it is important to put the caveat out there so as to make sure no, no one misunderstands me, is that no matter how much someone like me can empathize, try to understand, Try to wrap our heads around the black experience in the United States for men, women, and children. We can't ever understand. It's one of these things where it is an experience that is so ingrained in a culture which in and of itself should be our culture, all of us as Americans. But nonetheless, even in 2020, we have to have this separating, dividing line that we who do not have this experience will never understand the instinctive fear, the instinctive concern of just walking the streets of the United States as an American with just the darkest skin pigmentation for fear of, of police, of bigots, of anything that is not even in our scope of understanding. So, that out of the way, you know, it is the one interesting commentary is that uh, how many people try to chalk this up? You know, in political terms or social terms or current event terms. You know, people try to like put a happy face on it that, you know, things are a lot better than they were before. You go to day one in the 1600s when Virginia settlers first brought their black slaves over and thus started the concept of slavery and the not even the United States, in the colonies. From that point on to Eli Whitney creating the cotton gin and turning slavery not only as the bottom rung of the social class and the penalties of a losing side during a war or whether they're evil bullshit that happens that made that a justifiable thing into a lucrative business for half the country at the time. 
to the point where they had to see not only these not only these men, women, and children as second class citizens, not even class of citizens, as property. It took a civil war. It took over half took over half a million Americans to die for that concept to be broken. And that wasn't even and that wasn't even the the point of the Civil War, not for the North, because they just wanted to preserve a union. Getting rid of slavery was for many of them just an economic blow to the South because of slavery being such a lucrative prop lucrative business. You know you can you can tell the differences between abolitionists and those who, who say they just want to get rid of slavery, who go, all right, well, you got rid of slavery. Well, what do you want to do with them now? Well, you want to give them equal rights, the same as a white man? <laughs> of course not. Even Abraham Lincoln, at least at the start and midpoint of the Civil War, was not thinking in those terms. Abraham Lincoln, when he first came up with the Emancipation Proclamation, still had the idea in his head that any freed slaves could be immigrated back to Africa. The country of Liberia was, was founded on it being a landing point for freed blacks to return to Africa, to colonize them back to Africa. It was such a ludicrous concept for abolitionists that Wendell Phillips, one of the one of the more prominent abolitionists called Abraham Lincoln a first-rate, second-rate man. He was sarcastic about it. He's quoted as saying, you want to colonize the blacks? Well, a man may as well colonize his own hands. Or when a robber's in your house, you may as well colonize away your revolver. Trying to explain that these people should not be treated differently, that she should be no different than every other person in the United States. Born in America, they are Americans. Why are you trying to immigrate Americans away from America? Fast forward from Civil War, Civil Rights, to when you think 2020 is supposed to be all that better. I mean, whatever concept that you want to go with as better, it's not better, it's different. That's the there's the crutch in this. Nothing is, nothing is really improved. Because on the surface, things look like they improve. But underneath, it's not really improved. It's so much so that there, there was like a racist white man. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember if he was actually a politician or not. Who, was, who said something to the effect of, well, we, we cannot possibly be racist. We allowed you to have Barack Obama as president. You allowed. You know, that wasn't the majority of the popular vote that allowed him to be president of the United States two times like every other American who, who got popular vote or electoral vote and became president. No, it was allowed. Okay. Back to the caveat. That, um, I would not even understand this, what, what these people go through. And why they have to be treated so different that I even have to say in my own terminology, these people. In this time frame, no one, this, there not be, should be any difference. But and yet there is. It's even in our gears of thinking, right? And you can't, when, when you hear someone say that you can't understand and, and that and you get like defensive about that, you know, I can't say that, oh yeah, well the Irish had, had their issues and their deals with second class citizenship, the Italians being, most mostly being Catholics, had their issues and such and such. You know, that can be said, but I can't say that. And the reason why I can't say that, even though I am Irish and Italian descent, none of that shit happened to me. So I have no experience with it. I have knowledge of it. Like anyone that can pick up a book and read something, retain knowledge. But that doesn't mean that I know what's going on with it. So, in this long-winded explanation of me, yes, I don't understand. That aside. But what we have now is the death of this man 
yet again at the hands of police officers. And even though it was one police officer that was actually committing the offending act that caused this man to die, it's the other police officers who were just standing around who should, at some instinctive level, being a police officer, knowing that excessive force is being implemented on a person who is handcuffed and immobilized, they did nothing. So they, if <laughs> any of these people get arrested, should be arrested no different and charged no different than the person committing the act. Now, let's kind of discuss this person that was committing this act. Here is a little background for who is Derek M. Chauvin, and if I'm mispronouncing his name, I don't give a shit. Let's first start with this recent act. Being a Min Min Minneapolis police officer who murdered George Floyd on May 25th, 2020, three days ago. The restraint technique used by Chauvin to murder Floyd was not part of the department's training. Yet people were standing around just watching him do it. He was he is being represented by Tom Kelly, the same attorney who got Officer Jerome Yanzen, who murdered Philando Castile, acquitted. So I guess they they run in the same circles of having the same defense attorneys that helps protect the blue wall. Derek Chauvin was put on leave in 2011 in an inappropriate police shooting of an Alaskan Native American, Leroy Martinez. Oh, a little back, a little history, isn't there? Chauvin shot Ira Latrell Toiles, an unarmed black 21-year-old man in 2008. Chavez was one of the officers who murdered Wayne Reyes, a Latino man with 16 bullets forced into him. A total of 42 rounds were shot off. Chavez and another officer were chasing a car in 2005, causing the death of three people according to the communities united against police brutality. There were 12 police brutality complaints against Chavez in the Minneapolis Office of Police Conduct Complaint Database. They were all listed as closed non-public, and no discipline. This is the guy that put the knee on George, Floyd, George Floyd's neck. When I look at this, when I look, when I look at this list of these things that he had done, back check, of course, to see if this is all true or not, but I tend to, tend to think so. This reminds me of when an archdiocese finds out that one of the Catholic priests is being a pedophile and is molesting children, and then they take that priest and they play shell game and move him from parish to parish to parish. Because every time he decides that he he's getting that urge and he implements on that urge instead of them throwing his ass out, casting him out, Calling the police, because, as Jesus says, suffer the little children, come unto me. Instead of doing that, they use the priest's penitent seal of confession. So they keep protecting him, so they keep moving him, and we're playing this shell game. Right? Well, what does this look like with this guy in the police department? Who has a history of violence. Of killing people inadvertently or actively directly what does that say about this and incidentally um, I was very big on uh, Amy Klobuchar running for president uh, no uh, Joe Biden should not pick her she is a lodestone at this moment in time, with her own skeletons in her closet upon her office not bothering to prosecute certain police officers in their incidents, she would be a stone around his neck. She is completely inappropriate in this time to be vetted, nor be chosen as vice president. 
not without her vastly commitment, addressing a massive Mia Copa and airing all this out, which I'm sure she won't do. So, screw her. She, she does not deserve to be that spot. As bad enough as Joe Biden is grasping for anybody to, to, to VP for him, given what's going on with him. Last few days, there have been protests over his death. The people want to focus on the protests and focus on the property damage and the fires and all that. Setting aside the reasoning of why they're doing this, they have some issues themselves. Should the protests become violent? No. Should they destroy property? No. But what is the more egregious thing here? People protesting, getting resistance from that protesting, and then it turns violent, where both sides, both the protesters and the police, are committing violence? the death of an unarmed man in handcuffs in a police department from the sh from the shoot was lying upon the circumstances of all of that to the point where they they finally bring out the body cam video today highly edited it I mean I, I've seen redaction on paper you know the black lines over words I've never seen redactions on video, and they redacted the shit out of that. I'm, I believe George Floyd is one of the black boxes, because there's a number of black boxes that they had on the video. We still do not know what precipitated this brutality. We do not know what was the justification of putting his knee on his neck after he's already down on the ground as he's already handcuffed. The one thing that disturbed me as a human being more when I'm watching this is the guy, the cop's face. The cop is pressing his knee down on a man's neck for seven minutes. And if you want to get melodramatic about it, you want to make it seem cinematic, that you ex that, that in your mind's eye you're thinking that he's like throwing some racial slurs, or he's getting some sick, malicious thrill out of this, or showing any kind of emotion. No. You look at his face, and you see nothing. Nothing. It is a, a, a level of apathy that is heartbreaking and enraging at the same time. He is draining the life of a human being at his feet. And he's just looking over matter-of-factly at the crowd that are, that, that are there, that are watching him do this. They're watching him kill a man. And he's... As, his, as far as the emotional affect he was going for, Now, the protesters might not like the response that the uh, FBI and the um, Minneapolis uh, the officials were giving today, that they, they don't want to rush towards an arrest. Um, I understand why they do. They, they don't want to rush it. You put too much effort and you do just too, too quick in the public pressure in trying to compel an arrest you might miss something. The FBI is going to gather evidence. And the video, you might say the video is enough. Between you and me, I agree that the video should be enough for someone to hold their, their knee on somebody's neck for seven minutes until they are prone, who is not even resisting at all, despite what the department was saying beforehand. But you want to get all your ducks in a row. 
You want to make sure that you're so airtight that there is nothing they can do but surrender. And can say no, and say good. Even if they're going to try to defend themselves. You want to have the most strongest possible case. And it's behooven on them, given the history of the Minneapolis Police Department, on this type of thing that they need to get this done as efficient and as ironclad as possible. Which unfortunately means that we probably cannot see an arrest immediately. It will be disappointing, regrettable, and uh, disgraceful if there isn't ultimately an arrest for all four officers. Them getting fired isn't enough. And if there when I was hearing the, the officials talking, and you know, while at the same time I'm understanding and I'm agreeing with them doing this by the book as fast as sufficient as possible, no matter how long it takes. If they didn't have a, if, if they were worrying that there was a criminal act or not being committed by this excessive use of force, then why were these officers fired? I have had a cynical nature involving a lot of these incidents. Um, I'm a, I am a totally agreement with Black Lives Matter. As long as these incidents happen, all lives do not matter, clearly. Because if all lives didn't matter, then none of this shit would be happening. Um, the thing that always hit me for all the incidents that happened was uh, Tamir Rice. 12-year-old kid. 12-year-old kid. With a toy gun. Now, whoever decided to call the cops on this kid you know, in a park, wherever, that's one thing. Cop shows up. Shoots him. Doesn't that doesn't even stop the car. Just car slows, pop, 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 right? And cop doesn't get charged, does he? Loses his job, gets his job back in another precinct. Life goes on. Sometimes some of these incidents happen and you almost you almost have the thought in your head that goes, geez, I guess they want a vacation. So they're going to perform this little fucking incident and then they get themselves on administrative leave so they get to sit at home while this investigation is investigated and then once, once it somehow manages to get to court, then they get the slap on the wrist and then they go on with their life. While a family does not. Again, I can't understand what these Americans go through in their own country. But this is my perception. If this goes down the way, as we've seen others go down, that there'll be some sort of technicality where this clear case of excessive force, depraved indifference to human life, and murder gets way God forgive all of them but I'm not going to I'm going to blame anyone who has a major problem with that so turn from that important issue to the other important issue the wonderful milestone that we we passed oh get get the noisemakers get the fireworks we hit over 100,000 dead in coronavirus. Or as Trump would say, a very good job. Which he did say, you know, if we hit 100,000 dead, you know, that would count as a very good job. 
I I don't know and understand this cognitive dissonance with Trump supporters who buy his bullshit who will bob their heads and concur with this that we are doing a very good job and that he was immediately in on dealing with the coronavirus before anyone else in the world he knew it was a pandemic or he was saying the complete opposite at the same goddamn time it's like Jesus you, you, they never want you to ever look at past videos it's always now only now in the future once tomorrow is today forget about today because today is yesterday and yesterday doesn't matter so anything is said done on tape that you can re you can reference well that's just nasty bringing up what i said before that's just nasty but yeah we passed uh hundred thousand actually after we one day after passing a hundred thousand we're at a hundred and one thousand change but i'm glad we're reopening right right pushing uh pushing those uh reopenings because we need to get that economy rip roaring again for the election. The cognitive dissonance that I refer to, those who buy Trump's garbage on this, and his activity on this, and how he saved the country, and we're going to take a victory lap now. If he saved us and was the most efficient world leader in human history around the coronavirus why is the united states the, the number one country in deaths and cases if he's if he caught this early does anyone have a rational answer for that no you don't get to these situations where now you know in order to to make some sort of political hay or, or try to get the 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 basis support for him you know they make wearing face masks a uh, political issue so the face masks you know you're just weak or whatever true americans wouldn't wear face masks true trump americans wouldn't wear face masks You know, when you find video or you find tape of, uh, or pictures, excuse me, of like half the Trump's family are doing traveling, just traveling in masks. Trump goes to the Ford plant. They tell him specifically he has to wear a mask. Wow, okay. So in certain instances, he wears a mask at the Ford plant, but not in front of the press, because that would be the wrong image because that would be the same image that he is just like every other American that is responsibly wearing gloves and masks or sometimes it's a mask I don't know when, why we're giving up the glove thing but whatever you see these memes about you know uh, freedoms that uh, there's a person there's a couple that have signed that says my freedom is more important than your health that's a good Christian value, isn't it? There are people who uh, have memes about them holding up signs while they're like armed and uh, dressed up as cosplay GI Joes, saying, "You know, wearing a mask shows that you're living in fear." Really? Am I wearing a mask as I go back and forth to my essential job? It means I am protecting myself, but more importantly, I'm protecting others of what I could possibly have asymptomatically. I think the person who is living more in fear is those who are trying to shout and throw temper tantrums and pouty, pouty parties at state capitals while they have the little guns. You know, because clearly you can't have a protest without a gun. And what also segues back to our first issue is that when we do have these protests going on for the death of a human being who are not armed, or at least not armed to the teeth, like these yokels do, go into the state houses and astroturf that astroturf that protests. All the cops, the cops are fine with them screaming right at their faces, or getting themselves into the actual state building with guns. But these people, 
who are righteously angry and have every right to be angry, have every right to protest, and they get into a cop's face, well, then the cop shoves them back. Or cops shoot rubber bullets from the rooftops. They throw flashbang grenades and tear gas. So the heavily armed protest that are just protesting because they can't get a haircut or go to the fucking bowling alley, that's fine. But these people who are protesting over the death of a, of a human being without due process at the hands of the police, oh, well, then we have every right to push back, right? Uh, people want to reopen. People want to reopen so goddamn bad. There is a um, video that is floating around the internet. Um, I posted it on my social media. And I've encouraged everyone that I know to post it on their social medias or at least watch the video in full completion. I encourage you all to find this and uh, do so as well. Let me uh, look for this for a second. This is from the Pennsylvania State, Pennsylvania State House Representative Brian Sims. He did sort of a sort of a impromptu live video. It, it lasts. Uh, almost 12 minutes. Um, I cannot do this justice by trying to explain all the things about this. I really, really, if you can find it, watch this. This man explains he's a Democrat and his caucus was not aware that there were two Republican members of the House that tested positive for coronavirus. That the Republican leadership of that House knew about it and related to their members without telling the Democrats. For days and weeks, these people interacted with each other without ever knowing that two of these members were positive. So now everybody is now quarantined from their families, from their homes. Lives are uh, put on hold because they now they have to be tested and they have to go through the waiting period of whether they're positive or negative, and even if they're negative, they still have to stay put in quarantine until it's lifted, right? Find this video. There should be articles on this now, loading about. So find those articles, read those articles, watch this. At the same time that the Republicans were not telling the Democrats, of the two members while they were telling themselves that the two members were there. They were still pushing reopening. They were pushing that everything is fine. The worst is behind us. It's okay. It's safe to reopen. While knowing at least two of their members as a positive. Or it could be many other numbers that have been exposed, much less obviously to Democrats that could have been exposed. And anyone else in that goddamn building that have exposed. And, uh, and, uh, went home to their families and exposed them as well. I don't know if this is a party line thing, I mean, nationally. I mean, clearly, Trump, in the past few weeks, we found out that his own house wasn't completely safe. 
where we have uh, members of uh, his staff and Pence's staff testing positive, that uh, many, many members of the, of the Secret Service tested positive, so therefore 60 of their members had to be quarantined. All the while Trump not wearing a mask and then hawking his snake oil to hydroxychloroquine, which is for lupus and malaria, so that people with lupus, <laughs> they can't get it because it was too busy being tested. It's funny how he will, he, he will profess that he too was taking a drug whose side effects would kill him is more preferable than wearing a mask that all of us do. So, yeah. Find that video. For people who complain about Democrats, who want to stick it to Democrats, this is state level Republicans. This is what they're doing to not only Democrats, but themselves and uh, anybody else, innocent bystanders in the building, you know, janitors, and, you know, people who come in with business with the state government. Any one of them could have been, could have been exposed. This is what they're doing. And I don't. I don't know what to say to you if you have an excuse or you think this is a joke or you think the guy who's complaining about this is a tool or you think there's two sides to the story. Of course, there's two sides to the story. We haven't yet heard the Republican side of that story, haven't we? So why would they possibly not mention ex exposing the entire uh, collective members of the state house to possible exposure to COVID? I'd like to know an answer to that. I would love to hear their response to that. But uh, we'll see if we get it. So we go from that. These two important issues that are facing us. The illness of racism, the illness of a pandemic, these important these important issues that we have to deal with as Americans and as human beings. You know, one is in our emotion and what our sense of right and wrong is and the conflicts of, of how is this even possible to the other, which is a physical obstacle that has misinformation that comes out from all directions that, that we have no we, we have very little understanding of what's going on with it and when we try to protect ourselves people take that as try to run with that in politics so turning our measures to protect ourselves into some political football for their base returns on all that down to the petty stretch of humanity which is our president and says all the while we have 100,000 plus dead. He still goes to the Memorial uh, Memorial Day. He still uh, does the honoring of uh, our fallen soldiers. No mask. And mocking Joe Biden who does show up and does lay, lay a wreath with a mask and his little sycophants allies mock Joe Biden because He's wearing a mask, the same type of mask that I am I wear and many, many majority of Americans are wearing. But uh, he doesn't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. You know, what, what does our great and powerful and macho president of the United States want to talk about? He wants to talk about his petty, pathetic squabbles with Twitter. that when he is going off on his little pet conspiracy theories on Twitter upon mail-in voting because he because because they're so corrupt he thinks he's so corrupt the voter fraud will be all over the place even though he himself voted by mail and his little press secretary 
has voted by mail 11 times, somehow they can do that, but uh, you and me can't do that in the time of pandemic. We're not supposed to. When Michigan was preparing the current to release the ballots for uh, mail-in voting, President Trump threatened to withhold them aid. The fuck? For not only the COVID virus, virus, but all the other tragedies are having in Michigan, including the dam breaking. All because of mail-in voting? Really? Give static to California that's doing it? Give static to any other state that does it? Get into a spat with the AG of Michigan over it? So yeah, um, he, he brings out one of his little conspiracy theories on uh, mail-in voting, and then uh, Twitter puts down a teeny tiny little blue flag of fact checking. Nothing, nothing major. Nothing, uh, you know, nothing provocative. Oh my God! This action, this act that was done towards precious Trump, was violating his First Amendment right. It was affecting his 2020 election. I was just suggesting that you should read up on the facts of what he's talking about. Fact checking. He says a stifling his First Amendment right. Um, I think we need to have a just a very teeny tiny discussion on the First Amendment right. Um, any fact check does nothing to your First Amendment right. Okay? You have a right to say whatever you want, even if it's complete bullshit. You have the right to say it, and you can say it. No one stops you from saying it. No one stopped him from saying it. No one deleted his tweets over saying it. But the people that fact check have a, has a First Amendment right to fact check, to, to point out the bullshit. and say, uh, excuse me, but that's not accurate, because Twitter was very softball in their condemnation. But somehow even a softball, limp noodle version of fact checking was so horrible that now King Trump has to, you know, have a campaign against the terror that is Twitter and other social medias that are that are unfair to conservatives, that are unfair to Republicans. Fact checking is bad. So he does an executive order today that is supposedly going to uh, take a look at the social media protocols in turning of how they fact check and, uh, and their platforms of uh, editorizing and so forth, which uh, may actually backfire on him. Um, but of course, keep in mind that this executive order doesn't really have the power to stop anything. And he signs this. This will this can immediately be struck down in the court. So this is just another one of the king's attempt at doing a edict. You know, avert your eyes, serfs. Your betters are going by. Don't fact check them. So yeah, one more. I'm not going to go long on this because uh, it doesn't really merit more words for uh, Trump or attention towards Trump. With everything going on, and this is the thing he focuses on. Why do you support him? Why? I mean, I I deal with people, you know, there are people who are hardcore Trump supporters, and they're not going to listen to anything I say, and they're not going to listen to anyone, they're not going to listen to reason or logic or any of that. They're so gung ho on supporting him, even to the point where knowing that he's full of shit, he's full of their shit, and they. And they just want to stick it to the libs because that's as far as their political mindset goes. That is 
far as their nuance in the body politic goes. You know, screwing over them libs. They don't care that no progress has been done. Beyond the fact they'll just blame the other side that no progress has been done. They don't care that uh, half the things he says are lies. They like the lies. It's entertaining. He's been entertaining them for years. They're probably apprentice watchers. But there are people who, uh, who are also supporting him, not because they like him, but because they're so disappointed in the Democratic Party that even though they do not like this person who is the President of the United States, their first choice isn't going to get nominated or had bowed out, so therefore to punish the Democratic Party and <laughs> vicariously punishing the rest of the United States, they will go and support this person that they initially wasn't supporting at all, that was, support that was supporting someone who was diametrically opposed to Trump. It's a... Uh, better chance to go there. If the disabled is not there, then the second favorite is going to be someone that you think is the greatest, or you're just are so upset that this other person got in or is going to go in instead of your person. So damn the whole system, set it on fire. see what happens in November. We'll see what happens while we still deal with coronavirus. Even weeks and months after our 100,000 dead party. A very good job, as uh, Trump once said. We'll see how what progresses in Minneapolis if these poor four police officers the guy who uh, who did commit the act to kill George Floyd and the three morons that are just standing there and watching if justice is actually served in this and served emphatically enough that maybe bad cops can think twice and bad police departments will think twice and bad district attorney's offices will think twice to protecting people who commit these type of acts without due process while people are in custody again it cannot be stressed enough that complete excessive force in this incident of his death, where he is handcuffed, he's on the ground, he is not moving, he is not fighting back, he's pleading to the officers that he cannot breathe, and there's a fucking mayor in Mississippi that is condoning the officer's actions and doesn't blame him for the death because, well, if he could talk, then he could breathe. Fuck you. Guy is old enough, he can probably still sm smell Mississippi burning. You know, in the sense, like just like with Eric Garner, where he said he couldn't breathe. Oh yeah, he, he said it so therefore he could take in oxygen in order to say that he can't breathe. In a recent trip to Ocean City, I fell in the water. And I was under the water. I don't swim. And I have a fear of water. That type of level of water. So I was kind of, uh, 
I was under a bed. Uh, I had enough sense to hold my breath, but every time my head was able to come out of the water, uh, to pretty much say help, I breathed at that moment, but then a wave hit me again and I was under the water again, and I wasn't breathing. You can have someone down and choking them with your knee, and their head could move back and forth to gain enough breath that you could say that you can't breathe. And that would be truthful because no, you won't be, be you won't be breathing. Because there's one little one or two seconds of breath that you could say it can be snuffed out immediately. You turn one your head one way, get enough oxygen to say it, then it's clamped down, turn another way, oxygen to neck, clamps down. The mayor in Mississippi is full of shit. And anyone who says anything like that as some kind of defense or an excuse or trying to mitigate the circumstances of his death or trying to, trying to suggest that something else was going on. George Floyd, in his pleas, was explaining a lot of his physical conditions before they even begun to put, his, put the knee down and hold the knee down for seven minutes. No matter what conditions that somebody is going through, that they've already told you about doesn't mitigate. It doesn't wipe away seven minutes pressing down, robbing someone of breath till they no longer move to the point where, gee, I better call an ambulance and then cart him off to the hospital where he dies. Are you fucking kidding me that it got fired and that thing? Oh, well, that's into that. No. I understand, again, I understand that we are going to do this as efficiently as possible so we can get all the ducks in a row that we can make this ironclad. So that there is, that, that the evidentiary chain is right there and it will take something uh, monumental to give a jury a reasonable doubt. But the evidence in the video. They're firing. The depraved indifference to human life that he committed on this man that died, the apathy in his face, the apparent apathy of the three other officers who could have, you know, pulled him off because, uh, dipshit, that, that knee is not part of police standard procedure, and, um, you're committing excessive force because he's already handcuffed. So yeah, that also goes on me, because I'm sitting there with my thumb up my ass, not doing a shit, while this man dies. Yeah, I'm kind of back around with this issue. This is more important than Trump. And uh, since this has affected us as a country for centuries, this moment in time, this is up there, maybe even more than what we have to deal with with Corona. Because even in 2020, something that we've been dealing with since the 1600s, in one form or another, because again, it's not that things are better, things are different. You go from one inhumanity, one systematic, systemic atrocity, then you change it up, then there's another indifference, inhumanity, and atrocity, and systemic racism. Then you change it up. Then you have another, and another, and another. And you keep hearing that you know, people need to wake up. You know, people, all, all people need to wake up and realize this is going on. That, you know, white America needs to wake up that this is going on. Here's the sad, sick part of it. So many people do aren't, are aware of it. And they just shrug their shoulders about it. They may be that in its sense is its own form of racism. Because I had said that racism isn't just violent acts. Racism isn't just racial slurs. Racism is a myriad of things. From the most violent, humiliating, destruction, death, pain, dehumanity. Dehumanizing, I can't even say the word right now. 
from that can now just down to just same bullshit, same racist shit, down to stereotypes, down to just shrugging your shoulders. For people, for white people that live through Jim Crow, who live through the separate water fountains, who didn't, who didn't consider themselves racist, they didn't go to Bed Bath & Beyond to pick up their set of clothing for the hood, they still look, walked by the water fountains, saw the difference. Maybe their children are right there, probably under, not understanding why, and you having know, to explain to them that separate water fountains was, was being done because of whatever, whatever rationalization you're telling these children, which their children will then grow up to believe, the indifference, the, you know, not, not, not disliking black people, we don't dislike, the, dislike black people, we like them fine. But if you're not there saying that the separate water fountains were wrong, the separate buildings that the inequality is wrong, that, then what are you doing? You're condoning an evil. You didn't put on the hood. You didn't set the cross on fire. You shook your head and said, that's a damn shame. You weren't advocating that you weren't advocating that it's wrong, were you? Back then, 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago, or maybe last week. I'm a renter. I rent. This is what happens. Alright. Nearly going an hour on this. God bless everyone who believes in such things. Eureka, it's science for those who don't. Stay safe, stay healthy, wear the masks, regardless of how it makes you look, or if your precious king decides not to do so, and you're going to follow him and his, his mad desire of having a good economy for his election at the expense of human life. But even you, even you, even Trump supporters don't deserve to suffer, get sick, and die. No matter how much they believe in this guy, no matter how much they support this guy, I want you healthy. I want you happy. I want you living your life. I don't, even if you go and vote for him and you perpetuate him for another four years. Unlike people who say horrible shit on both sides, on liberals or conservatives, Democrats, Republicans, no one, no one should needlessly suffer. No one should needlessly get sick because of uh, the carelessness, recklessness of people who decide, eh, I'm American, I don't need to wear a mask. And certainly, no one needs to lose their life being stopped by the police. Y'all have a good night. The ranter rants, because this time his urge to rant was beyond rising. I'll see you later.